My name is uh, Johannes, and I'm part of Monochrome, and we are an uh, international art and theory collective. And today, I want to talk to you about Sierra Zulu. What is Sierra Zulu? And of course, I will answer the question a little bit later. But first, let's go to the next slide that reads drama. So let's talk about drama, especially let's talk about cinema and drama. Uh, cinema is a pretty vivid, pretty living form of media. So the cinema is not dying at all. The cinema is not a dying medium. There have been a couple of changes over the last decades, but cinema is alive and kicking. Um, let's say it has a little bit of a problem, and I'm talking about the traditional narrative cinema that we have around for more than 100 years. Well, uh, action. Cinema is about action. Cinema is about filming stuff that's happening. Cinema is about explosions, it's about uh, kissing, it's about the grand emotions, and there's always something moving. So cinema is about filming action, but we have a little bit of a problem nowadays concerning the action of cinema. Well, it's displayability. The problem nowadays is that cinema wants to film action, but our world, the world we live in, the world of the knowledge society, the world of the information society, is day by day depleted of physical action that can be filmed. There's a great guy called Deleuze, and he called it the movement image. And this movement image is kind of lacking in the meantime in our knowledge society, Western culture. So we want movement, we want stuff happening, we want explosions, we want bank robberies, we want train robberies, stuff like that. But the fact is that nowadays, most of that stuff is actually totally anachronistic. The crimes of today, the crimes of the 21st century, the crimes are not like that. It's not bank robberies. It's stuff like that. The big crimes of today are not analog. They are not movement. No, they are actually pretty, well, they're pretty vivid and they're pretty dynamic, but you can't really film them. We live in a world of data networks and very, very interesting but totally abstract movements of data around the globe. The crimes of today look like that. The crimes happen at the international stock exchanges. The crimes of today are not visible. So how can we tell the stories of the 21st century if we still use the traditional medium and the traditional narration of, well, uh, the cinema of the last 100 years. Yes, cinema nowadays still uses the same stories and the same narrations as they did in the 1920s and 1930s. The Internationale, I guess you know it, the Internationale uh, has a wonderful line, and it's, uh, we are nothing, uh, let us be all. Uh, and I'm not talking about people nowadays, I'm talking about stories. We have to reinvent cinema, we have to reinvent narration to tell the stories of our everyday lives. Uh, that's Brecht, Bertolt Brecht, very cool guy. In the 1920s, he said that uh, an image of a Krupp plant does not tell us how the enterprise Krupp functions. And that's what I'm talking about. Nowadays, the lives, the stories, are based on abstractions. We live in a digital world, uh, but we are still, of course, emotional beings. But still, it doesn't make sense to tell the stories of our everyday lives, completely neglecting that we are dominated by abstract formulae, that we are dominated by the stock markets, that we are dominated by things that are not visible. So how can we escape this catch-22 situation? Well, uh, let's try. Uh, we at Monochrome are trying to make a film. Uh, it should be about international relations. It should be about national struggles. It should be about transnational capital. It should be about the systems of control, about the knowledge society itself, and about the abstract powers that be. 
So what can we do? Uh, we have to be careful. That's the first thing. Because we can hardly uh, make a, a, a problem filming a, filming a film about a bank robbery. But you can make many, many, many mistakes talking about the abstract powers of everyday Western capitalist society. So, A, if we want to make a film, we have to be careful because film itself can steal your soul. Film is extremely expensive. You need tons of money to make a film. So we have to be careful here. And B, uh, we have to be careful because film itself is a very hierarchical uh, process. You usually have a director, you usually have read this and that and blah and blah. You have many, many people who do their jobs in a strict hierarchical uh, uh, order. That's not how monochrome works. We are a collective for almost 20 years, and we are pretty non-hierarchical in the way that we do projects. So now that we want to make a film, a feature film that is, uh, we have to be careful like not, not losing ourselves. But we want to try. So the film will be called Zero Zulu, that is, Zero Zulu. And Zero Zulu is a feature film project by Monochrome in col collaboration with uh, the Golden Girls Film Produktion here in Vienna, Austria. And we are very excited to work with those guys. They are awesome. So, uh, the so-called Republic of Austria. Let's start talking about the content of the film. This is Austria. And the northeastern part of Austria looks like that. It's Lower Austria. It's pretty boring. I grew up there, okay? So, uh, what most people do not know is quite interesting, because inside of Lower Austria, there is a small, tiny little enclave, its own state, and it's called Soviet Unterzögersdorf. <laughs> Soviet Unterzögersdorf is pretty interesting. So, it's a microstate. It's only like 1,500 people. It's really, really small, yeah? Uh, it's established in 1955, after the Soviet forces left Austria because of the Austrian Treaty. Uh, it's independent since 1991, because the major Soviet Union collapsed, but they are still around. And it's totally isolated. We don't actually know a lot about Soviet under Zygersdorf. We know that it probably lacks inhabitants. It probably lacks resources. It probably lacks space and certainly disk space. Okay? So, why am I telling you this whole story here? Okay. Uh, A, Soviet under Zygersdorf has no diplomatic relations at all. People ignore it. But it has a secure border. And why does it have a secure border? Why? Because our friends of the United Nations are there. There is a small camp at the border between Soviet and Zygersdorf and Europe, and a couple of United Nations officers are doing their shifts there. That's actually how uh, the camp looks like. There are five people there. A Canadian uh, commander, and then we have a Nigerian guy, a Scotsman, a French guy, and a guy from Bangladesh. And they're sitting there in the middle of nowhere, guarding a border to Soviet and Zygersdorf, um, that nobody is interested in. They have done that for five years and never seen a single Soviet. But, well, I guess they get paid by the United Nations, so that's why they are there. So, suddenly, and that's how the film starts, uh, there is a <laughs> explosion. You see at the horizon, uh, there is something wrong in Soviet on the Zygersdorf. There's an explosion, and suddenly, those poor guys, the United Nations officers, who are used to doing nothing, suddenly have to do something, namely their so-called job. So, uh, what happens is they have to find out what's going on, and I'll tell you, it's a pretty strange thing going on. Yeah? So, uh, in the end, there is a whole dilemma of conspiracy, media, drama, espionage, and I'll tell you, the very foundation of information society itself might be shaken at the end of the film, but I can't tell you about that right now. So, uh, we are doing storyboarding right now, we're doing casting, we're doing technical feasibility studies about the special effects, and we have a really great uh, workforce. Uh, 
For example, we have uh, Arash Riahi, who is one of the heads of Golden Girls Film Productions, and his last film was actually shortlisted for an Oscar, so he knows what he's doing, okay? Uh, that guy, Aaron Mozalski, is uh, a wonderful CGI and compositing guy. He worked for Industrial Light and Magic and LucasArts, and he was among the team who built the first Monkey Island adventure game, you know, in the early 1990s, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, that's... Uh, Chris Brown, she worked for Spielberg and David Fincher and Del Toro. She's our casting agent in the US. Uh, she knows what she's doing, obviously. Uh, and that's Mark Mothersbaugh. Mark Mothersbaugh is the singer of Devo, and he wrote soundtracks, especially for Wes Anderson films. And he wants to work with us and create a couple of songs for our soundtrack. So all of these guys, of course, would not work for us for the regular standard fee they would usually get. We cannot pay that. Uh, so, uh, they like the idea, they want to collaborate with us, and that's what we're doing right now. I can't really tell you a lot about the actors and the performers, because, you know, unions, agents, it's kind of tricky. We're in, you know, like, how do you call it, like, contract, uh, blah, 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 dee, 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 da, 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 right at the moment. So, no names here, but I can tell you that we have uh, uh, cool guys who want to have cameo appearances and small roles in the film, like that guy, Joey Ito, uh, and that guy, uh, Mike Bonanno, one of the Yes Men guys. So we kind of reached out, talked to people, and said, hey, we want to do this, do you want to help us? And they want to do that. And that's uh, why you are here today, I hope. Because we want to call for heroes. We want to call out to help uh, to, to help you help us and us help you uh, in creating a new film about the information society. I know it's kind of strange, this like Soviet thing, why do you need all of that? But let's have a drink and a Coke or a schnapps or something later on, and I'll tell you more about that. So, uh, Sierra Zulu is in the making, I hope so. Uh, if you want to contact us, that's our website, zera-zulu.com. You can find us on Twitter and on Facebook. My name is Johannes of Monochrome. Uh, it was a pleasure telling you about, uh, about our small uh, project we are having right now. And uh, thanks a lot. Good night.